Well, good afternoon, friends, and welcome back to another episode from the Cumberland Outdoorsman. This will be another one of my 22 Rimfire series videos. And in this video, I'm going to be covering some different species of hickory that occur here in my area. Here where I live in Tennessee would be considered the Western Highland Rim. And it's pretty much a typical habitat that you would encounter in states such as Virginia, Kentucky, uh, Alabama, Arkansas, Missouri, you know, all these eastern states that you find hickories in. And the hickory species that I'll be covering occur in just about all these states. And what I'll be doing is talking about these trees because they're so very important for the squirrel hunter. And so that you can identify the trees and the stands of hickories that you need to concentrate on to become a successful squirrel hunter, especially you beginners out there that don't know much about it, I urge you to watch this video all the way through, and at the end of the video, I'll have a bonus for you. But we will be doing some squirrel hunting as well. Now, each species of tree that I discuss is one that I've harvested squirrels under, okay? Except for one, one at the end. And you need to learn that one too because that's kind of one that you need to avoid but uh, all the other species of hickory trees that I'll be discussing are important food sources for squirrels. Now squirrels feed on other types of trees such as oaks, you know, and beeches, beech nuts, different types of seeds. They also feed on uh, walnuts, for example, black walnuts, and I'll be covering that in this video as well. But uh, what I'll be doing is discussing the way the bark on the tree looks which can be very confusing with hickories and it's easy to get them mixed up. We'll be talking about the leaves and we'll be talking about the fruit, the nut. So what I'll be doing also is giving you the common name and the scientific name for these hickory trees. So stay tuned. Let's get started. The first species of hickory tree that I'd like to discuss is the one that I have here behind me. This is the red hickory and it's quite common here in my area and in most of the Tennessee Valley area. And uh, the red hickory is one of those that most people don't really think about when they think about a hickory tree. It's uh, usually the shag bark hickory and there's one right down here in this little bottom. And we'll be talking about the shag bark hickory as well. But getting back to the red hickory, the scientific name is Caria ovalis. Okay, and uh, I guess they get that name because of the oval shaped fruit. And here on this twig that I so conveniently found that fell off of this very tall tree, you can see the leaves are typically seven leaflets on each stem. Okay, let me discuss these leaves first of all. Hickories have what's called pinnately compound leaves, that means that one stem. The stem is the petiole, the bottom part of it, and then the rachis is the upper part of it, okay? This is one leaf, and each leaf has multiple leaflets, as you can see here. There's a seven-leaf pattern here, and that's typically what you find with the red hickory, five to seven leaflets, sometimes nine, but usually seven leaflets. And one sure identifying factor in knowing that you've got a red hickory on your hands is the base of the stems, the base of these petioles, as I discussed, have a reddish, almost purplish coloration to them right there, as you can see. That's a red hickory. And the fruit, or the nut, is kind of a grape shaped, but like a little oval shaped fruit and the nut of course is inside and usually when you find these they're growing in the same type of habitat that you would find other species of hickory such as the pig nut hickory the mocker nut hickory and the shag bark hickory of course now the meat that's inside of the nut on a red hickory is rather sweet so squirrels will target it and uh, Here's the difference between a red hickory and a pig nut hickory. 
I've got two of them here. Both of them are in my hand. There you can see the red hickory. Kind of just an oval shaped hickory nut. And there's the pig nut hickory. And I'll be discussing this species later on in the video. Pig nuts always have this little protrusion here where the nut actually attaches to the tree. I call it a little pig snout. <laughs> kind of a cute shaped little nut. And uh, these are occasionally bitter tasting, but they can be sweet. And we'll talk about this as an important food source for squirrels later on in the video, as I mentioned. Now the red hickory usually separates all the way along the length of the uh, husk. And as you can see, I've got one here that's partially open. You can see the nut inside. It's already split open exposing the nut there. That's what the squirrels are after. And they usually come off in four sections like this. And the husk is relatively thin as compared to other hickory species such as the shag bark and the shell bark and of course also the mocker nut hickory. Which by the way, there's one right over here. So they grow in the same area in most cases. Um, Hickories are those kind of trees, you know, that it's really unsure sometimes what you have because even I get confused and I've been doing this a long time. So getting back to these leaves here, I'll show you one stem here that has five leaflets. That can easily be confused with a pig nut hickory leaf, okay, because it only has five leaflets. But on the same twig here, Right here where the fruit is, you've got one that has seven leaflets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, you know, identifying hickories can be a tricky thing sometimes, especially when you look at the bark. So, you know, don't always go by the bark itself. Use other identifying features to positively identify any hickory that you might be encountering. Let's get a closer look at the bark of this tree. Okay, here we have the red hickory. As you can see, it kind of has a uh, somewhat rough texture, not quite as rough as the pig nut or the mocker nut, and the furrows are not as deep. It has very slightly exfoliating bark, like this right here. You know, some of the bark does flake off and there's the leaf next to the tree bark as you can see that's the red hickory not many people talk about the red hickory but it is somewhat common in most areas usually occurs in well-drained soils like we have here, and it's somewhat dry, but it's still well drained. In conjunction with the pig nut hickory, and over there behind the pig nut, you see a mocker nut hickory. Here's another pig nut hickory right here. Take a look at this bark. See how that's a, a bit of a rougher texture to that bark, a little bit more exfoliating. That's your pig nut hickory. And there's your red hickory. Take another close look at it. These two trees quite often grow together side by side. And it doesn't really matter, you know, if you find evidence of feeding on the ground, there's another fallen fruit. That's a perfect example right there of a red hickory. Beautiful example. But if you look around, you'll find that these hickories are a preferred food item. Here on the ground, I'm seeing some shavings already. 
that's fresh. There's a piece right there. There you can see these squirrels have been in here feeding. Now another way that you can positively identify certain species of hickories is by taking some of the nuts home, breaking them open, and tasting the meat inside, the kernel of the nut. And if it's sweet, then you know the squirrels are going to go after that because they always concentrate on sweet hickories. There is one species of hickory nut that squirrels usually will avoid, and that's the bitter nut hickory, because as the name implies, it just has a very bitter taste, and usually what tastes bitter to us will taste bitter to them as well, so they usually don't go after it. Let's go ahead and advance forward to the next species, but before we do that, I'm going to get down here, and I'm going to set up and see if I can harvest a couple of squirrels. Okay, walking along this path here, I just heard a deer snort up there, and as I looked up, I see a shagbark hickory. So let's go check out that tree. See if we can find the evidence of feeding. There you can see it. Growing tall. And by the way, that's actually a fox squirrel barking right there. I think I see him there. Hear how that has somewhat of a higher pitch to it? That's a fox squirrel. He's mad about something. I'll tell you what. We'll cover this tree here in just a little bit. Then you can see how it's growing tall. I want to see if I can get a shot at this squirrel.
was one successful hunt. Got this big fox squirrel up here on this ridge. And I knew I could tell the difference between the barking of a fox squirrel and a gray squirrel. And if you listen closely to the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. They have kind of a higher pitched, a little bit louder sound than a gray squirrel. A gray squirrel is normally a little bit more coarse sounding, but uh, they're in association with these big trees, especially in these river bottoms, which is where I am now. But I'm kind of up on a ridge above a creek bottom, and the Cumberland is just on the other side of that creek, the Cumberland River. So I know there's more fox squirrels up here because I can hear them in the background, but I just wanted to harvest one for this video. But here behind me, we're getting on to our next species. This is one that I covered in the previous video. This is the shagbark hickory. So let's take a closer look at this tree. Now this is the tree, the type of hickory that most people associate with hickories because it's probably the most common shaggy bark hickory there is. There are three other species and the next one is right over there but we'll be covering it in a minute. But as you can see, the bark is exfoliating here. It's peeling off the sides all the way up. This is a really large tree, straight trunk, very tall, grows on most well-drained soils as we have here. Nice, rich dirt. Here you can see the ground. Very dark, very rich. Here's a yellow jacket nest. I just spotted it. There you can see they're going in and out of that hole there. Something you need to watch out for as an outdoorsman. Avoid those yellow jacket nests and hornet nests as well. Just thought I'd point that out. We're well, getting back to this tree. As you can see, the bark is hanging loosely off the sides. And it's very hard, just like the previous species. Very hard bark, hard to break. And I'll tell you, when you cut into one of these trees with a chainsaw, you can see sparks coming off of your bar quite often because the tree is just so hard. And here on the top of this ridge, I see some young shagbark hickories. And there's husks all over the ground here. These are most likely from the seeds of that big tree. But as you can see, even in these young trees, you start to get this scaly bark, this scaling that so many people associate with hickory trees. That one there is well on its way. And I would say it's probably already producing some nuts. And the fruit on the ground, what we call fruit, is the nut, actually. But it's covered by a very, very thick husk try to avoid that. We'll try to avoid that yellow jacket nest. But there you can see the husk of the fruit and it splits open usually. There's one that's still intact. That's the typical size for a shagbark hickory nut. That's what you want to look for. Okay? Here looking at the ground, you can see, I mean, it's just absolutely littered with these husks. So I know the squirrels have been in here. All the way up this ridge here. And there you can see where the squirrels have been feeding. That's shagbar kickery. Typically, they have five leaflets, okay? They have five pinnately compound leaflets for each leaf. Let me get a good example of the leaf, and I'll show you. Well, after doing a little bit of browsing around and looking, I finally found a young shagbark hickory tree right here. This is a perfect example of a shagbark hickory. There you can see it has the typical five leaflet leaf pattern, 
quite large actually larger than the uh, red hickory which I featured at the beginning of the video but always with five leaflets coming off of the rachis here at the petiole of the leaf where it attaches to the stem very stout stems very stiff there you can see the terminal bud and somewhat velvety in texture I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, camera might be picking that up. And these young trees, these young shag barks, always have a smooth texture to the bark when they're at this stage. Only when they get older do they get the exfoliating shaggy bark feature. And all around here, I don't want to confuse these pawpaws here with hickories, even though that's a good thing to look for. Look for these pawpaw thickets. You'll often find hickories growing around them. But uh, here on the ground, I'm seeing a lot of these seedlings from that hickory. As you can see there, that's from that shagbark hickory. There you can see the husks where these nuts have fallen and they're taking root in this rich soil for future generations of hickories. Directly under the canopy of this big hickory tree. I'm spending a little bit more time on this tree because it's just so important for squirrel hunters. Okay, there's a perfect example right there. There's a seedling from that shagbark hickory. And here you can see the husks of these nuts all around here. By far, this is probably the most important tree for squirrel hunters if you're gonna go in the early season especially these hickory trees. Now throughout this video as I cover other species of hickories I'll be going back to this species a little bit more often because it's just such an important tree to focus in on as a squirrel hunter and uh, there's other benefits that can be gained from this tree besides squirrel hunting and I'll be covering that in the bonus section but uh, I've got another species of hickory that I'd really like to cover and it's just right over here in the uh, creek bottom here so let's advance forward and we'll check it out Well folks, as I was walking along this pathway that runs adjacent to this creek slough that comes back through here, this muddy creek, we're finding the next species of hickory that we'll be talking about, and that's the shell bark hickory. As you can see, the fruit on these trees is very large, much larger than any other hickory species. And as you look around on the forest floor, you can see that the husks are very apparent due to the size of the nut, of the fruit. There's some more over here, laying on the ground. That's probably the first thing you'll notice as you're looking for this species of hickory. But let me show you the tree here, very similar to the shagbark hickory, and there it is. There's two 
big shell barks right there. Shell bark hickory. Take a close look at this bark. As you can see, it's also a loose bark, exfoliating, very much like the shag bark. Maybe not quite as shaggy. Has more of a long striated pattern. And it's probably a little bit darker than the shag bark hickory. And squirrels also will target these trees, the fruits from these trees. All right, friends, right here is another example of a shell bark hickory. This one's rather young, still very tall, straight trunk, pretty much. And right here is one that's a little bit older, still a tall tree. And here's an example of the leaves. As you can see, very large. Very large leaves with seven individual leaflets. And the stems are very, very stout. The twigs, as you can see, are quite thick. There's the terminal bud at the end. Another example right here. I mean, just huge fan-shaped leaves. Always with seven leaflets coming off of the rachis, okay? Well, there's another fox squirrel for the stew pot. Harvested that squirrel, once again, using my original Remington 581 bolt action. I was over there talking about those young shell bark hickories, and I heard some movement up here in the treetop, and I could instantly recognize it was a fox squirrel. So I got my rifle and got in position. And I waited for him to move, and then he went over to another branch there, and I could get a clear shot at him. Sorry that that was a little bit out of focus. The camera focused in on a leaf that was right in front of it. So anyway, <laughs> we did get off a good shot. So the shell bark hickory, what's the difference between it and the shag bark? Well, as I mentioned, first of all, where you find them. Occasionally you'll find a shag bark hickory in these creek bottoms and river bottoms, <clears throat> but more often you'll find these shell barks here. And that's where I typically find a lot of fox squirrels. Now they can also be found in upland areas because I've harvested fox squirrels just about everywhere. But uh, typically you'll find shell bark hickories in these creek bottoms like this slough right here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. There you can see that slough running this way. And then it runs back that way. And as I look across the creek, I can see more shell bark hickories. This is a particularly good stand right here. Well, just as a point of interest and to reiterate the differences between the shag bark hickory and the shell bark hickory which is here behind me let's take a look at this fruit first of all this is the shag bark hickory fruit or nut which is inside this husk and that's the shell bark here's another example I mean look at the size difference typically you'll find shag bark about the size of a golf ball and then these are nearly the size of a black walnut or I have seen them approach the size of a tennis ball so they get quite large 
Also, the size of the leaf and the number of leaflets on each compound leaf. Here is the shell bark leaflet, as you can see, two, four, six, and seven. They have seven leaflets, and they're very large, probably the largest hickory leaf and hickory nut amongst the genus. So let's get a close look at the bark with the leaf here. I want to get a real close-up look here just to show you. Let's, see. let's do it this way. Okay, there's the leaf against the bark of this big shell bark hickory tree. Typically very large trees with very large leaves and large fruit or nuts. Here I've got one of the nuts in my pocket. There you can see the size of that nut. I mean, it's the size of a walnut. You know, what most people would associate with a walnut, whereas the other hickory species are not even half that size, or hardly half that size. So there's your shell bark hickory, folks. And do squirrels feed on them? Well, that's proof in the pudding. I just harvested that squirrel right there, that big fox squirrel. There's another one of the nuts there. You can see where one started chewing on it. They usually turn dark after they hit the ground. Real dark brown, almost black. And uh, there's a closer look at the base of this tree. You can see it's shaggy as well, but not quite as shaggy as a shag bark. This is the shell bark. Another important tree to learn if you want to be a successful squirrel hunter. Well friends, I'm a little ways down from that last big stand of shell bark hickory and I looked on the ground here and I'm finding more of these large husks from another shell bark as you can see. And as I was making my way through here, I wanted to see if maybe I could find some evidence of squirrels feeding. There you can see the husks falling to the ground. And I would assume that this is from active feeding. And so I came over here, started looking for the shavings, and indeed I'm finding them quite a bit of it. Give you a close up here. Here you can see these squirrels have been in here chewing on these big shell bark hickories. Just to show you the size of the nut inside I mean, look at the size of that thing. That's my hand for comparison. That is a huge hickory nut. That's what they're after right there. And there's the evidence of it, where they've been feeding. There's the tree. Once again, just to reiterate, I want to drive this point home. A shaggy bark with more long striations. Not as shaggy as the shag bark, but with exfoliating tree bark here. And also quite hard, you know, tough and brittle when you break it. It just breaks apart in little pieces like that, even though it's hard to break. I say brittle, that's what I meant. And generally speaking, a darker colored trunk, you know, darker bark. But once again, a very tall tree with a huge canopy. Even though it's not as big a tree as what we found down there, it's definitely bearing fruit. And the squirrels have been in here as well.
Well, good afternoon, folks. I'm out here today after work. It's late afternoon, and I'm be covering the next species of hickory in this video, and it's right here behind me. It's the pignut hickory, and today I'm carrying my Remington Model 512 bolt action. It's an old gun that I customized many years ago, and I've taken lots of squirrels with this in the past. It's a really good shooter, so we're going to get set up back here in the woods and see if we can harvest a squirrel or two with it. But first, I want to talk about this hickory tree right here. It's the pig nut, and I've been picking up some of the fruit. And here you can see, this is typical of the pig nut hickory right here. That's the shape of the fruit. You see how it has that little prominent snout, just like a little pig snout coming off the front of it? That's your pig nut hickory. Now, quite often these are bitter, but squirrels have the uncanny ability to know which trees produce sweet nuts. Now, these are not really that sweet, but they can be rather good if you get the right tree. And these have been dropping here on the forest floor for quite some time now. But these are freshly fallen. And there's several here on the ground from last year. There's one right there. You can see the little snout on the end. That's how you can tell this is a pig nut hickory. And right over here I've got an example of the leaf. And I'm going to retrieve one of these leaves for you and show you what it looks like. It's a uh, five leaf pattern, just like the shag bark hickory. But before we look at the leaf, let's look at the bark a little bit closer. Here you can see it's uh, somewhat rough, not exfoliating like the hickories that we had in the river bottom or up on the ridge that we just came from, like the shag bark or the shell bark. That's not an exfoliating hickory tree or hickory trunk. It has somewhat the same characteristics as maybe an elm tree, I would say. Very close, very similar. And right here we have the leaves. Okay. Let's see, that's not a very good example there. But anyway, it's a five leaf pattern. It looks very much like a shagbark hickory leaf. That one there is missing the fifth leaf, but they typically have one, two, three, four, and then five right there. Let's see if we can find another one that has that leaf pattern. Okay, here we go. There is a pig nut hickory. That's a young one there. One, two, three, four, five. Just like a shag bark. Only the bottom of it is smooth. Has a smooth texture. That's how you can tell the difference. Let's see. I think I know where there's a shag bark right here. There's one right there. There's a shag bark hickory right here. Growing right up here on top of this ridge. Here's the fruit from those pig nut hickories. There you can see the little prominent snout sticking up. There's your shag bark. Like I said, I'll be going back to this species as a reference to compare it with other hickories. It also has the five leaf pattern. Much stouter twigs and stouter stems or petioles. But the bottom of the leaf here has that velvety texture just like I covered earlier. So it has five leaves and it has that velvety texture with this exfoliating bark. You know you've got a shag bark hickory on your hands. But if it has a five leaf pattern and it's smooth on the bottom, then you know you either have a red hickory or a pig nut hickory. And most likely you'll have the pig nut hickory. Here's a better look at this young tree here. There you can see the five-leaf pattern. 
And generally speaking, the leaves are not as big as those on the shagbark hickory. Here's another one right here. This may actually be a red hickory, but uh, no, it's a pig nut. That's a pig nut hickory right there. That's what it looks like. They can be somewhat confused with the red hickory, but remember the stems here on a red hickory have a reddish purplish hue to it or coloration where they join up with the main twig. Okay? That's your pig nut hickory. So do squirrels feed on pig nut hickories? Absolutely, and we can see the evidence here below this tree. Here you can see the ground is just covered up with shavings from these squirrels that have been feeding on these pig nut hickories. There's an old pig nut. You can see the little snout on the end. But there you can see where the squirrels have chewed the nuts apart to get to the kernel inside. There's another old pig nut. There's one that a squirrel started on and for some reason stopped chewing on it. I guess it probably had a parasite in it. There's a type of beetle, it's a, a, a nut weevil. The larvae actually enter the nuts and feed on the nut meat. There's another example of the pig nut hickory. Old example. There you can see where a squirrel has started chewing the husk to get to that nut. So definitely pig nut hickories are also a preferred food item for squirrels food tree. That's a pretty good sized tree there. And in most cases you'll find more than one species of hickory wherever you're looking, you know, where you want to go squirrel hunting. Here looking on the ground I can see that the forest floor is just covered with old pig nut hickories and with shavings from this year and from last year. Here you can see that nut was chewed open and all the meat inside was removed. How the squirrels do that, I don't know. But if you've ever tried to pick the nut meat out of a hickory nut, you know it's not easy. But they can do it with amazing efficiency. I just thought it would be a good idea to include this information especially for you beginning squirrel hunters so you know what to look for and that's the reason I'm trying to educate you a little bit I try to give you what little knowledge that I have and share it so that it might help someone all right friends while we're up here on this high ridge where I first started squirrel hunting many many years ago I remember I killed my first squirrel here in a mocker nut hickory and that's what we have here behind us might have been this tree I'm not really sure I think it was one on that side over there but uh, anyway that's what we have here is the mocker nut hickory and here is the leaf from that species of tree and just like with the shell bark hickory it has seven leaflets one two three four five six seven typically and the underside is slightly velvety, a little bit hairy here on the rachis. And it's a relatively large leaf, not as large as the shell bark, of course, but uh, still quite large compared to most other hickory trees. And here on the ground, I found some of the fallen fruit from the previous years. That's the mocker nut hickory. And this one still has a nut inside. Here's another one here. As you can see, the husk is rather thick. 
not as thick as a shell bark or a shag bark, but thicker than the other hickory species that we've looked at. And has a relatively large nut as compared to the fruit. Here's another one. You can see how the sides are splitting down. This is larger than a pig nut or a red hickory, but not as large as the shag bark and definitely not as large as the shell bark hickory, which is enormous. But here I'll peel these away. There you can see that's the shell. It's somewhat thick, but not near as thick as the other two that I just mentioned. Once again, here's the nut inside. I wish I had a fresh example, but if you watch my channel in the previous video, I harvested two squirrels out of a mocker nut hickory, and I had some examples of the fresh fruit, because they were feeding very actively in that tree. And I took some of those fruits home and I cracked them open, and I have to say that the meat inside of a mocker nut is probably the sweetest of any hickory species, and that's including pecan. Pecan is a relatively sweet nut, but it's not as sweet as a mocker nut. Let's get a closer look at this tree here. The typical pattern looks very much like a pig nut hickory, but you'll see very distinct X-like markings in this tree, in the bark. Standing back, you can probably see them a little bit better. There you can see a big X mark right here. Right here. See that big striation that kind of crosses, crisscrosses. That's typical for your mocker nut hickory. And it's like that all the way up the tree. It's a relatively good sized tree, not as tall as most other hickories. There's something up in that tree. That's probably a squirrel feeding up there right now. But there you can see the canopy. And generally speaking, quite large leaves. See that big seven leaf pattern? And they have very stout twigs as well to support those big leaves. But that's your mocker nut hickory. In there. Okay, throughout this video, I'll be featuring the different species of hickories at different settings because quite often you'll find that one tree will be the right species that you're looking for but there are no fruits falling. For some reason that tree is either not dropping fruits yet or they're just not producing this year. It's just not bearing nuts. Here we have a mocker nut hickory once again. Perfect example. I can show you there the leaf pattern. As you can see large leaflets Hanging low. A seven leaflet, pinnately compound leaf. This tree's been here quite a while. And if you look at the bark, you can see, looking at the trunk, you can see all those interlacing ridges that form X's all the way up the tree trunk. Fairly dark colored. Mockernet's probably the darkest colored hickory of all the species, except maybe the shell bark hickory. It's fairly dark as well. But here on the ground, I'm finding lots of freshly fallen mockernuts here. These are great examples, and that's the reason I'm featuring this tree once again just to drive home the point of what to look for, you know. And by the way, these mocker nuts are really good to eat. They're an important food source for the squirrels, but they're also very good to eat if you can get them opened up. There you can see where they're starting to split open. The husk is starting to open up. That's where I gathered a bunch of them, and they're just all over the place here. I mean, just covered up. 
There's an old husk from last year. You can see it's thicker than the red hickory. Once again, I just want to illustrate this point so that you'll see what I'm talking about. Let me find a fresh one that's been opened. I think I'll gather these up, but uh, anyway, there's one that's starting to split open. Okay. There you can see the nut inside. Pretty good sized nut, actually. And mocker nut is the sweetest hickory there is. There's a really good sized one. This will make a great example for the video right here. Okay. That's with the husk removed. Nearly as thick as a shell bark hickory, which has a much larger nut. I mean, they're just enormous, but that's pretty good size. That's almost the size of a shag bark. Actually, that is about the size of a shag bark. But I know this is a mocker nut. Because shag bark nuts, the fruit itself, have corners on them, like ridges, raised ridges on the, on the nut. This is a mocker nut right here. Okay guys, it's getting a little bit late, but right here behind me, I think we have what's called the bitter nut hickory. And there you can see the leaves with the fruit on the twig. That's the fruit. And they have these small leaflets on these stems. There's nine leaflets on each stem. Well, seven to nine. <clears throat> There's the bark of the tree. As you can see. Easy to be confused with the mocker nut. Now, squirrels don't very often choose the bitter nut hickory. I mean, when there's so many other different varieties available to them, the bitter nut is not of their choice because just as the name implies, the nut itself has a very bitter taste and they're going to choose something that tastes better just like we would, folks. So, you know, if you can find feeding activity around these trees, then that's fine and well. But uh, I would concentrate my efforts more on mocker nut shell bark and shag bark hickory.
Well friends, the next and final tree species that's actually a nut bearing tree relevant to squirrel hunting is the American walnut or black walnut. Here I've got a young one here behind me that just started from a seedling from an older tree that's down here in the yard. We're in my front yard here, by the way, and uh, we'll be talking about the leaves and the fruit and also the tree trunk. Let me give you a closer look at this young black walnut here. As you can see, even in this young tree, you have deep furrows here. And the leaves are pinnately compound, just like hickories, only with many more leaflets. From 9 up to 23 leaflets. Typically about 12 or 14 leaflets per stem or rachis. And the stem emerges from the terminal end of the twig, as you can see here, just like in the hickories that we discussed earlier. Right here. There's the twig. And right here at the end, you see all these stems emerging, the petioles of the leaf. Now black walnut is an important source of lumber because it produces a very fine-grained wood. It's used in really high-end furniture, for veneer, and also for sporting goods, such as this gun stock. Only the best guns get black walnut stocks anymore. They used to be more common on older vintage firearms, such as this one here. But as you can see, it's a really finely grained wood. This is a natural color, by the way. Very attractive color. Black walnut. And uh, like I said, you know, it's very expensive wood. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of firearms manufacturers save black walnut for their best firearms, because it's just such an expensive wood. We'll take a closer look at this big tree down here and I'll show you the fruit as well. There's that black walnut down here at the lower end of my yard. And here all over the ground you see these fruits that have fallen. They come down in late summer and early autumn on into late fall at times. And uh, they're just all over the place here. Here inside the husk this is a husk that was on a nut. There's the nut itself. Inside this nut, there is actually edible fruit. It's a walnut, and a lot of people are familiar with walnuts, only it's black walnut. It has a stronger, richer flavor than the regular English walnut. And uh, occasionally you'll see black walnut uh, products sold in cookies or ice cream and other commercial products. Here's the bark of the tree. As you can see, it's very dark, deeply furrowed, kind of a rough, rough bark, rougher than most other deciduous trees, and very dark. And looking at the crown of this tree here, you can see up there, there's still several walnuts hanging on the twigs where the leaves have fallen off. You can see the fruit still hanging on each twig. Now there's also another species of walnut that occurs wild in eastern North America, and that's the butternut or white walnut, but it's become quite rare. I don't even know where there's any examples that I can show you because here in Tennessee they've become endangered and I just haven't been able to find any and I've looked. It's very similar to the black walnut. The fruits are more elongated and sticky on the outside and they're usually infected with a tree canker. You know, it's like a open place on the bark and it exposes the tree, the wood of the tree and uh, eventually leads to the tree dying and uh, that's why there's so few of them left. They're working on a canker resistant white walnut to try to bring that species back and I hope they do. 
I've got another example of a black walnut on some public hunting ground, so I'll see you there. Now, American walnut or black walnut can be found in many different types of habitat. I found it on high uplands and then like on Piedmonts or even in mountaintops on the eastern United States in the Appalachian Mountains. Lots of black walnuts there. Um, I found it in river bottomlands on many occasions, creek bottoms, you know, good fertile soil. And if you look at the ground here, you can see that this is really rich, rich ground. I mean, look how black that soil is. Now, a lot of that's due to the leaf litter that was left behind by these black walnuts. There's an old shell from a walnut from years ago, or probably from two years ago. Let's see if I can get the husk off of this one here. I guess. There it is. <clears throat> There's a nut inside of this old husk and that's what replants fresh walnut trees. So we'll plant one right here. But if you look at the ground here, this is a telltale sign that you're in the vicinity of a black walnut. These big green fruits. Now like I say, you can gather them up and make use of them for yourself. I mean, they're just everywhere. There's hundreds of them all over the place here. Well folks, I was sitting here contemplating and wondering if I should mention this, but I think it's noteworthy to say that today is October the 8th, well, it was October the 6th, 2019, when I made my first YouTube video right here in these woods, squirrel hunting. <laughs> and I started this video just a couple of days ago, so I guess we can call this kind of a uh, anniversary edition because uh, I always like to come back to these woods and I've had a lot of successful hunts here. Deer, turkey, squirrels. It's just been a great place. So uh, I thought I'd just mention that. And then when I first made my first video, I was carrying my Remington Model 581, or one of them anyway. And today I'm carrying this customized Remington Model 512, which I carried just the other day because I had a viewer request that I carry this old rifle into the woods and do some squirrel hunting with it. So I thought I'd bring it out. And you know, let me take the opportunity, first of all, to thank you all for watching, but also to apologize. I know the video is rather lengthy, but I really wanted to relay some knowledge in regards to the different species of hickories that occur here in the Eastern United States. I think if you know what you're looking for, what type of tree, then I think it's gonna put you several steps ahead in becoming a successful squirrel hunter and to be honest with you I actually learned something by doing the research for this video I knew there were different species of trees but I was never really able to positively differentiate which type of hickory I'm, I was looking at you know I knew a shagbark hickory but to be honest with you I didn't know that there was a shellbark hickory I thought they were all the same until I started doing the research and I located that stand of shellbarks that you saw in the video. It's just like the differences between the red hickory and the pig nut and the mocker nut and the bitter nut hickory. <laughs> they can be really confusing. So this morning I came in here and I found this red hickory over here and I found some signs of feeding. And here's where I set up and there were four squirrels right here in this one tree. And uh, quite often you'll find that if you get settled in, in a good area like this, you can harvest several squirrels out of one tree if you find the right one. And that's the reason I made this video, so that you can 
positively identify what type of tree you're looking for to become a successful squirrel hunter. Well, all right, my friends, if you made it this far in the video, then you've made it to the bonus section. And uh, what we're going to do in this part is we're going to make use of some of these hickories that we gathered, these hickory nuts, while we were out squirrel hunting and identifying different species of hickories. Here I've got a smaller example of a shagbark hickory nut. And then here I've got a mocker nut. And then finally a shell bark hickory nut. And as you can see, the shell bark is really larger than any of the others, even though this mocker nut is pretty good size, you know. But uh, we're going to crack these open. I'm going to show you how I crack these open. And then we're going to take the kernel, the nut meat, and we're going to make hickory nut brownies. So stay with me. This is really worth it. I thought I would take this opportunity to do this because in a lot of squirrel hunting videos, normally you see the game meat being made use of, you know, different recipes for squirrels, and there are many. <clears throat> I think I've already had uh, two recipes so far, but uh, we're going to take those squirrels in another video, and I'll show you how to prepare that meat. But for now, we're going to make a dessert. I've got a little bowl here where I collect the nut meat. And what I like to do is I like to use a vise, like I've got here on my workbench. And I just take the nut here. I'll show you this big one here out of a shell bark hickory. And first of all, I put it in there and just get it started. This puts nice, even pressure on that nut. You can do this with a hammer, but quite often when you hit the nut with a hammer, unless you do it very uh, carefully in a very controlled fashion, pieces of that nut are going to go flying all over the place and you'll waste some of the nut meat. So there you can see that has opened up nicely, cracked all the way around, and that exposes the nut meat inside. And by the way, folks, I mentioned that the mocker nut hickory was probably the sweetest. I'll have to say there's a toss-up between the shell bark and the mocker nut because this is really good. These are really good here. I just pick out the nut meat with this nut pick. Makes quick work of it after you crack it open. Just get the meat out like that. Doesn't matter if you get it out all in one piece. Sometimes you can, but quite often you can't. I just get it out of the shell of the nut. Get as much of it as you possibly can. Sometimes you'll get big pieces to come out all at once. You know, like that right there. And these are really good. I mean, you can eat these just as they are. You know, you can eat the meat. And they have a great flavor. It's like a maple maple syrup smell to them and flavor. Not as sweet as maple syrup, of course, but be careful not to get any of the hard pieces of the nut in with your edible pieces. This is tedious work, but, you know, it's well worth it once you get done here. I just pick it out like that. And these shell barks, they, they actually have quite a bit of meat in them, you know. Even though they have a very thick shell around that nut. I see a piece that I missed there. I need to get that out. All right. 
Now I'll crack open this shag bark hickory nut. These are easier to crack open than the shell bark because the meat inside is not surrounded by as thick of a covering, you know, the nut covering. As you can see, it's relatively thin. This one's already dried up, so it's no good. And be careful because a lot of times you'll open these nuts and they'll have these little worms in them, like larvae. You don't want those. What they are, they're actually the larval stage of a nut weevil. Here we have the mocker nut. I try to crack them several different ways so I can get easier access to all the nut meat inside. There you can see there's a nut inside that mocker nut. So anyway folks, I'm going to go ahead and finish shelling these out and then we'll go into the kitchen and we'll make the brownies. I'll see you there. Okay guys, we're here in the kitchen and here I've gathered about half a bag of nut meat from various different types of hickories. Shag bark, shell bark of course, uh, mocker nut, red hickory, and a few pig nut hickories. And I added in a little bit of pecan that I got at the store. Not much, just a few pieces. And what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to toast it here on the oven. Right here. Here's our mixing pan we're going to make our brownies in. But here I'm going to go ahead and heat this up on medium heat. And I've just got a cookie sheet here. And we'll take our nut meat and spread it out on our cookie sheet. There's a few big pieces in there, that's fine. There's a piece of black walnut there, as you can see. So it'll add a little bit of different flavor into our recipe here. That's quite a few pieces of nuts there, but uh, I think that'll work out just fine for our brownies. While that's toasting, while it's heating up, we're going to go ahead and follow the instructions here. I just chose Betty Crocker, but uh, you can use any kind of brownie mix. What we now it says here we need a quarter cup of water, a half a cup of vegetable oil, and two eggs. Instead of using vegetable oil, I'm going to be using this avocado oil because just like our nuts, it's a beneficial oil that's healthy for you. It's omega-3 oils, and I've been using that in just about all my recipes. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab some eggs here. Okay, as you can see, we got our eggs in here. Now we need one quarter cup of water. Okay. And a half a cup of oil. So we'll do that times two. Go ahead and open this mix here. Just have to stir those nuts again. <laughs> I don't want them to get burnt. All right. We'll go ahead and pour in our mixture.
I'll go ahead and get this all mixed up and then we'll put our nuts in here and put it in the oven. Okay friends, one thing I didn't mention, this is the dark chocolate flavor. So I've got the oven preheating right now and I'm mixing this up pretty well. I think I got it pretty well mixed in there. There you can see that dark fudge. Looks really good. Okay, I think we have our nuts toasted right here very well. Take a little taste test here. It's hot. Mm, man, that's good. That's really good. Okay. Now I'm going to spray some of this into my pan here so that our brownies won't stick. You can see all the different types of nuts in here. You can see the black walnuts and the, the hickory nuts. Just a wonderful blend of wild nuts that I gathered out of the woods to make these brownies with, these dark chocolate brownies. Now then, I'll just take a spoon and mix this in real well with our brownie mix and we'll go ahead and pour everything into this pan here there you can see our brownie mix with all those chunks of hickory and black walnut in there Okay guys, now I'm going to put our brownies in the oven here, right in the middle of the rack, and we'll check on them when they get done. Okay folks, well here's the moment of truth. Let's see how well these brownies turned out. pretty good. I'll tell you what folks, I'm going to let them cool off a little bit and then we'll come back and give them a taste test. Okay guys, moment of truth. There you can see the chunks of hickory inside. Hickory brownies. All right, here we go. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll be going in the woods again this weekend, and I'm going to be gathering some more hickory nuts. That is delicious. I mean, it goes hand in hand right alongside with these brownies. I'll tell you what else it would go good with. Cookies and also banana nut bread. That with a cup of coffee is quite a treat. Now you can substitute hickory nuts with pecans or walnuts or whatever but you're not going to get the same flavor folks 
I just had a piece of that black walnut and there's really no other nut that tastes quite like a black walnut. Hickories are very similar to pecans only they have a distinct buttery maple flavor to them. And uh, if you ever go out and gather hickory nuts I would say the two top choices would be shag bark hickory and shell bark hickory but also mocker nut. And the only reason I I wouldn't say mocker nut is because the meat is hard to get out of a mocker nut hickory but it is very tasty. It's very good. It's pretty much worth the effort, the extra effort to get those. So if you get out in the woods and do some squirrel hunting and you find a fresh batch of hickory nuts it's probably worth taking some home with you. Let them dry for a few days or a week or so and then uh, crack them apart and try to get as much of that succulent nut meat out of there as you possibly can. So friends remember if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever your outdoor pursuit happens to be I hope you enjoy it as much as I do but also remember this hit that like button smash the bell icon and subscribe that way you'll know when more videos like this one will be coming your way so until next time y'all get out there and enjoy the great outdoors fall is just starting to come in looks like it's going to be a good season so uh, y'all take care of yourselves and god bless i'll see you next time